Let's meet the players. In seat number one, we have Tom Dwan. He's known as Dur Online. He's only 23 years old and already has $1 million in tournament earnings. In seat number two, it's a man literally putting his money where his mouth is. It's the mouth, Mike Matisau. He's a three-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner. Seat number three is Phil Ivey, highly regarded by many of his peers to be the best all-around player in the world. Seat number four is Patrick Antonius. He's more than just a pretty face. He's one of the most feared shorthanded players on the circuit. <laughs> Seat number five is Andrew Feldman. This Englishman started out as a paper boy, but then he turned 20 pounds into 4 million pounds online. Seat number six is Chris Ferguson. He's known as Jesus. He won the World Series of Poker main event in 2000. And seat number seven is Alan Cunningham, a phenomenal force at any poker table. He has over $10 million in tournament winnings. I'm David Tuckman alongside Gary Jones, and we've got poker here. Gary, it's a phenomenal lineup, isn't it? It really is. We've got seven of the best players in the world sitting down to play a cash game. I know there's an empty seat in seat number eight. I'm glad it's not me sitting down here. These are some really tough players. Six of the players bought in for $100,000. Patrick Antonius, he decided to cover the table. He's in for $400,000. We've got an even $1 million at this table. And Phil Ivey, first to act with the 5-4. He's not going to play it. But just to remind our viewers, the blinds are $300, $600 with a running ante of $100. Right. 2100 And Patrick Antonius is going to raise this up to 2100 Button is on Alan Cunningham. Small blinds, Tom Dwan. Big blind is Mike Matisau, but that's the ace-king offsuit of Chris Jesus Ferguson. This mine? Now, he's faced a raise from Patrick Antonius. Is this a re-raise spot? I think it probably is, even though it's the first hand. Oh, we're not either. Has it been there? Six thousand and a half. Well, he's made the re-raise. Six now back to Patrick. He's up against Chris, who, who doesn't play as many cash games as Patrick, but he's giving him some respect nice and early. Chris is going to win the first hand. Yeah, nice re-raise there from Chris Ferguson. He's going to take the first pot and strike first blood. Take take advantage advantage of I, tried, I tried to steal it. Take advantage of Just me. like that. Buttons in front of Tom Dwan. Small blind Mike, the mouth matters out. Big blind is Phil Ivey. Patrick Antonius will be first to act. He's under the gun. Dealer asking for the $100 ante. Now we're going to be playing for 24 hours straight. If you're a poker player, how do you gear up for such a long session? Make sure you get a good night's sleep and uh, prepare for the coffee for the rest of the day. Well, Antonio's going to pass. I think most poker players are used to doing long sessions. Sitting at the table for a good 12, 14 hour, hours is nothing unusual. And the occasional cash game can go on for like 24, 36 hours. So I don't think most of these players are a stranger for that kind of length of session. Well, Chris Ferguson, yes. definitely not a stranger at putting chips in the pot. He's going to raise it up with ace seven. But he's walked into the nines of Alan Cunningham. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how Alan wants to play this. Very right. raise. 6,000 to go. Makes it 6,000 to play. Putting 6, the pressure back on Chris. Now Chris Ferguson out of position with the ace-7 offsuit. Yes. Well, we the yeah. only play he really had, huh? Yeah, pretty well. I think that was always going to be Allen's as soon as he decided to re-raise. So two hands, two re-raises, and both of them have picked up the pot. Oh, that was a flash card, I think. All right. All right, let me turn that back in. Turn it back in. Oh, is it happened to be a four? Action on Andrew yeah, Feldman. <laughs> Not for very long with that hand, I don't think. You can no, the other way. Count. Jackson five in the muck. Pass. Ferguson can get out of the way. Over to Cunningham. Seat number seven. Uh -huh. Raise 2,000. And he makes it 2,000. Well, and he's picked up the Cowboys. Now, is that a pretty standard raise? The blinds are 300, 600 of the $100 ante. Slightly more than you probably expect. Three times the big blind is a more standard kind of raise. But 
it's pretty early in the day and perhaps he doesn't want to get too too creative with his his two kings but he's happy to pick up a small pot rather than lose a big one and he does and ivy throws away the ace nine showing respect to cunningham cunningham he gets a lot of respect from his peers doesn't he well i'm not surprised he's a very very strong player but he's also relatively tight especially this kind of early we've already seen him do very well in previous series of the million dollar cash game Welcome to the Full Tilt Poker.net Million Dollar Cash Game. Buttons in front of Patrick Antonius. Small blind, Andrew Feldman. Big blind, Chris Ferguson. Alan Cunningham will be first to act. Six hundred to go. Just one laboratory. Pass. Here's Tom Over. Duan. Yeah, that's Durr. Oh, he's got the snowmen. Two eights Great. for Tom. And he's going to raise it up to 2100. Cool. Phil Ivy in there with a 10 7 of hearts. Yeah, kind of the gap suited connector. Now he's got cool. position on Tom Dwan. And that's going to bring in Patrick Antonius as well on the button with the suited ace. And this pot is quickly ballooning. Up to nearly ten thousand dollars. Cool. Well, Andrew Feldman's in there as well. Yeah, I thought maybe I would see a, we'd see a squeeze play there from Andrew Feldman, but against these players, he thinks twice. Chris in there as well. Wow, it's uh, not a lot of respect for Tom's raise there. Five players. Well, I think by the time it got to Chris Ferguson, he figured, well, nine, I'm priced six, in six. nine six six, couple of diamonds out there. And it's not a bad flop for Tom Dwan, but Chris Ferguson has outflopped him. Phil Ivey has flopped the gut shot, but if he hits his gut shot, Tom Dwan makes a full house. Well, he's reaching for some chips, looking like a continuation bet. He's got a lot of players to get through with this bet, but uh, if he's not going to bet this kind of a flop with his two eights, what does he need? 7,200. Don't think Phil's likely to call this. He's got players behind him. Only got a good shot. You know, sometimes in position, Phil Ivey might be floating here, but with so many of the players behind, he's really got nothing. He's got two hearts in his hand, but you know, Phil Ivey, one of the best in the world. What do we know? If he decides to put the chips in, it's probably the right play. Well, probably the right play for him. And it's a $7,200 bet. From Tom Dwan, action on Phil Ivy. Looks like he's staring at some more chips. Just eyeing up the other three players behind him. Now you look at a flop like this. Two diamonds out there, possible straight draws as well. Paired board. Is this the kind of board you might be making nice. a move on? Well, he's decided to lay it down. I think if he hasn't got the three players behind him, he might call with position, float nice. a card and see what Tom decides to do on the turn. But as it happens, he's got out of the way. It's going to be a tough decision for Chris. If okay. Phil had a called, he might have uh, laid this hand down, but I don't think he's going to now. Yeah, well, with everybody else folding, now Ferguson only has to worry about Tom Dwan. He's flopped top pair with a queen kicker. But he's out of position. This is Chris, who's probably maybe the least experienced in a, a cash game environment out of these players. Obviously, such a great tournament player. Exactly. So he cool. still knows the pretty well value of hands, and he's decided to make the call. On turn. Ten of clubs. Turn is a ten of clubs. Gives a good shot ten. straight draw for Tom Dwan. Would have hit Phil Ivey if he had decided to float one. Check. Tom now, the board is somewhat draw heavy. Does Tom Dwan think he's ahead here? Does he think maybe Chris Ferguson's on a draw? Well, check. Well, he's going he's gonna to check it. We're yeah, going to see will. a river. Ten. I think he's happy to take the free card. That's pretty well brought a lot of cards, a lot of hands completing with that ten. Would have been particularly good for Phil Ivey if it had stayed in. 
And if somebody was in there with diamonds or somebody was in there with 7-8, that 10 of diamonds completed both draws. Check. And Ferguson going to check this down. So Duan Tom. checks as well. And Ferguson's going to win this with a better two pair. He's got 10s and 9s. Tom Duan with 10s and 8s. And Chris Ferguson wins a nice nice pot there. $26,000 headed to Chris Ferguson. Yeah, I think there was maybe an opportunity for Tom to bet the turn. I think it was a good pressure bet he could have made. Of course, he's worried that maybe that's completed Chris's hand or Chris is sitting there with a six and he may be happy to take the free card to maybe bust a six by catching the seven or eight. I'm not surprised he checked it, but possibly an opportunity missed. First act is Mike the Mouth Matisau. Now, Gary, you have a lot of experience with a lot of these players. One player in particular I was wondering about, Andrew Feldman. Well, he's actually one of the few at the table I haven't played with much. I've watched him play before. He's uh, one of those players that's really come, come to a head very, very quickly over a short period of time. Definitely what you call the new generation of online superstars. Made an awful lot of money very, very quickly playing, well, this game. No Limit Hold'em online. 2000 Well, it's $2,000 over to Tom Dwan. And he's going to call this. Two players. Defending his blind. Yeah, Dwan versus Ivy. Neither player with much of anything it's here. Ivy with the queen eight. Check. Tom Dwan with six four. Dwan has outflopped him, though, with a pair of sixes. Three he's thousand. got bottom pair, but how does he know he's ahead? He's out of position. Well, it's a bet from Phil. It's a pretty scary board. It does look like it's likely to hit a razor, but that oh. doesn't stop Tom. He wants to see what the turn card is, hope, hoping possibly to catch two pair to crack a decent hand. King. Well, the king Check. pairs on the turn. Is that more likely to think... It, now, if you're Tom Dwan, are you more likely to think your pair of sixes is good here? He's got two pair now, kings and sixes. Of course. Well, it's a check from Phil. Seven. He's got plenty of cards he could have gone in front with. That seven's not one of them. Check. Check. Six. Six. And Phil Ivey shuts down after his flop bet. Tried one continuation bet. It didn't work for him. He shuts down. Tom Dwan's going to win this pot. And it's $11,000 headed Tom Dwan's way. The Full Tilt Poker.net million dollar cash game. One million dollars on the table. Blinds are $300, $600 of the 100 running ante. Six to call. Beautiful venue in the heart of London. And uh, not a beautiful hand for Phil Ivey. That's not going to stop him. Most mere mortals would throw 10-4 in the muck. But Phil Ivey? Looks like he's going to play this one. And I'm pretty sure, did Ivy limp in there? Yeah, Ivy limped. It's a raise from Patrick Antonius to 2,700. It's an odd, it's an odd limp there, in a, in a sh not a shorthanded game, but seven-handed. To limp in an early position with 10-4 suited? I think he's just trying to mix it up a little. Wants to play a couple of hands early on. 27 to come. Possibly feels like he's not in the game at the moment. Well, one thing that's interesting, every single year we see the Million Dollar Cash game, we see Phil Ivey, we see him mix it up. And sometimes he's down a couple hundred thousand dollars, but at the end of the day, he always seems like he's the big winner. He has had some of the biggest pots in televised poker. Was it over 800,000 we saw in one of the previous series he managed to win? And it was between Again. these two guys, actually, Patrick Antonius and Phil Ivey. Well, here he goes catching a bit of a hand here. Well, it's an interesting flop. We had this, the, the flush draw for Patrick Antonius and an open-ended straight draw for Ivy. King high is the best hand right now. And Antonius is going to bet 5,100. Cool. And Phil Ivey is going to call. Four. Well, Phil's gone in front right now, but it's still a pretty scary looking card. Check. It's a very scary board there. I mean, you've got three, four, five, six. You've got a one liner to a straight. But Patrick Antonius raised pre flop. Would you put your opponent on a seven or a deuce here? Check. Well, it goes check, check. Here comes the river. Queen. And the river's the queen of diamonds. Misses both players. Check. Okay. Check. 
And both players check the river. Phil was going to take this one down. Managed to get a little bit lucky by catching the four. And Patrick Antonio is probably wondering, if I bet one more time, do I win this pot? Well, we'll never know. And Phil's going to be counting the chips. Phil Ivey, second on an all-time money list. Adds $18,000 to his stack. Tell him why you are who you are. The hand plays itself. It did. Hi, I'm Phil Ivey, seven-time WSOP bracelet winner. When I first started playing, I played, you know, 16 hours a day every day for the first four or five years. So I really just kind of gave up my life to poker. I didn't really have a mentor. Uh, I spoke with people that I played with, you know, got their opinions on certain hands that would come up and things like that. I really respect Chip Reese, one of the best players ever, if not the best. And uh, you know, I just enjoyed playing with him. I enjoyed his, his company and just so just, just, just a, a wonderful person. They're all pretty good people at the table, so uh, you know, but we're all trying to take each other's money. There's no doubt about that. I just never won a hand. I end up losing that day. <laughs> wow. How much did you win in flips? Five hundred or four hundred? Four hundred. How much did I win in flips that day? Pat? Six. Well, some things that never change. Our big winner so far is Phil Ivey. He's up eighteen thousand dollars. Flipper than you know, like real good at poker. Anyway. Tom Dwan, down a few thousand already. Patrick Antonis is the most money at the table, but he bought in for four hundred. Then poker. Poker's you know hard work. I like you know those luck games. You just run good in them. Ivey with the worst hand in poker. Well, it's almost like a handicap that he should have. The best player in the world with the worst hand in poker. And he raises it up. Oh, I work harder than you do. It's actually a re-raise of Tom Dwan's raise. Got stuck and then tilted your way into playing like 70 hours a day. Tom Dwan originally raised it up to 2100 with 7-5 of clubs. Phil Ivey doesn't give his opponent credit for anything. He's going to re-raise him with 7-deuce. Obviously not playing his cards, he's playing his opponent. On top of that, he has position. You're all the same. Nine, King Jack. Yeah, Nothing for either player, so I'd expect a bet here from Phil. Check. King, Jack, nine. Couple of hearts out there. Dwan checks. When you start firing with the seven deuce, you know that you're probably going to have to keep bluffing because you're not likely to have a showdownable hand. 11,000. Now it's a question of whether Tom wants to have a, a replay. Phil Ivey bits 11,000 into about a 15,000 chip pot, and that's going to be enough to take it down. I'm going to bluff Phil one big hand today to make up for what he did to me the last year. And Phil Ivey showing us all why he is one of the best in the world. Back to normal, Ivey's winning most of the pots. And why you don't even need cards to win sometimes. I can't get those flips, though. I really not don't I don't really need much of a Here we are at the uh, fulltiltpoker.net million dollar cash game. One enough. <laughs> I mean, I don't need many hands to start. Tom Dwan first to act with the ace 4 offsuit. Pass. Well, okay. he reached for some chips and changed his mind. Here comes the mouth Mike Madisau with his two sevens. I'll put it out oh. there anyway. <laughs> and this is what's so dangerous about Phil Ivey. We see him make calls and re-raises with 7-deuce, 8-6, 10-4. Now he's got a real hand. He's got the 9s. Impossible to know where you're at, though, you're, when you're against Phil Ivey. Exactly. He's just flat-called this one. Possibly playing the player here, of course. Mike Madisau a little bit tighter than Tom Dwan in the starting hand selection. Queen, queen, five. Looks like a good flop for the two sevens of Mike. Well, it's a great flop for both players there. 3,200. Ivy calls him. King. Well, maybe another scary card if your opponent was Check. in there with Ace-King. Check. Well, they both checked it. Here comes the turn. River, rather. Deuce. Yeah, River is the deuce of diamonds. Well, talk about a safe card. Well, it, it does complete the flush draw. There are two diamonds on the flop. Five thousand. Oh, and Ivy. I think he knows he's ahead. It's a great oh. value, but he's going to value town. Mike's hoping he's got the five. Or he's trying to represent the queen, which he hasn't got. 
Well, it's the 2-9 to Phil. And Mike plays his first pot, loses his first pot. Always have me by one. And Mike the mouth. At a loss for words there. I'll stay out of your way, man. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna trap me and get it all. You can trap me and get it all. You gonna trap me and get it all. You and Phil Holmes have those. Let's see. I'm not like Phil. He's gonna trap me and get it all on one hand. Right. Get it all. Good chuckle about Phil Helmuth. Of course, Phil Helmuth not here today, but he lost about three hundred thousand dollars in season three of the Million Dollar Cash Game after uh, after running out. Here, look, I'll just quit if that's what you want. A poker player needs to remain calm, and really, you need to have that calmness. You need to have that focus. Phil's just—he's a showman, you know. He's got a heart of gold, and but he's not. I mean, he's really completely not. And Phil Helmet already down over three hundred thousand dollars. Not happy. He is apparently quitting the game. Yeah, that's pretty regular with Phil. He's—he's he's really a completely crazy. Is that what you want? Though? I don't even remember the blow up. I, I tell you that, that that might be crazy. I don't know if I wasn't at the table where I was, but you know I've seen it so many times. I don't really think too much about him blowing up. It's kind of like. I'm getting breakfast in the morning. I mean, you don't really think too much about it. I mean, it's just like, I mean, it's nothing. I mean, that's just what he does. Well, you know, Phil's just a really emotional player. I think if he stays here, he could end up losing a lot more money. If, uh, if it looks like somebody's outplaying him a little bit or something, he really just can't take it. He tries to rationalize it out loud to everybody. I still had 13 outs. I could easily have won that pot. He made a bad call against me with 10s. Ivy hit an offsuit seven. I mean, his only card to get paid. I mean, you know, come on, if an eight or a queen comes, there's not any action. I got news for him, that's poker. Sometimes things don't go your way. So if you're not prepared to, to, to lose or prepared to have, have some things not go your way, you know, um, then that's, that's probably not, that's, that's not a good thing. If I'm not happy, I just go. I don't, I don't have to play in a situation where I'm not happy. I think that's part of the reason why they haven't been too successful in, um, in the cash games. Because, you know, they, they, they kind of think everything should go their way all the time and they're not prepared for when things don't. Once again, I'm David Tuckman alongside Gary Jones. And seven of the biggest names in poker have come together. Oh, Madison likes the sevens. See if he likes the fours as well. He does. Just, he's just gonna, cool. Yeah, he's going to limp cool. in with the fours. Fill in there. Here's Patrick with a pretty genuine starting hand with the ace jack. Right. And we talked about Tom Dwan's position. If you're Mike Madison also, you've got... You have Patrick Antonis and Phil Ivey directly to your left. Very tough, tough spot to be in. Pass. And Antonis has raised this up to a little bit over two thousand dollars. Pass. And I love being in there with small pocket Pass. pairs because if you do hit your set, you can win a monster. But in this case, heads up, out of position against a tough player like Antonis. Are you calling? And the the other point is, he doesn't always have to have a big hand, so you, you haven't got that payoff value if you do catch. Of course, we have seen... Well, that's a pretty good door card queen there six, for uh, Mike Mattis out. But it's exactly what you said. Now, the flop is queen 6-4. Exactly what you said in the sense that Antonius doesn't need it's a big done. hand here. And in this case, he only has ace high. So it might be tough for Mattis to get paid off. Now, Mattis leads right into the razor. I do actually like that as a play. If he's up against a, a big pair or something like that, he may end up Pass. picking up a big pot. But he's probably cost himself three, 4000 in a continuation bet. But if he's, up, he's he's going for the throat. He's hoping to win 100,000 in that pot, but as it happens, Patrick hasn't got much to call him with. Now, leading into somebody like Chris Ferguson, I like, because it's more likely Chris Ferguson does have a big hand. But Patrick Antonius, though, why not give him a little bit of rope and let him hang himself? It's true, and you could possibly just call him down. We've already seen him running without the ball once today, and he may be tempted to do it again. We're in the heart of London for the Full Tilt Poker.net Million Dollar Cash Game. Seven players, one million dollars at the table. Pass. Patrick Antonius, the one-time model, now poker pro, not going to play. Andrew Feldman, though, we haven't heard from much from lately. I have a feeling we might hear something from here. He may play the ace king, I'm pretty sure of that. He's raised it up. The rest of the players will have noticed just how tight he's been. Now, do you need to mix it up a little bit more to get action? Well, he's getting a call here from a weaker hand of uh, Phil. 
Heads up. Jack, queen. Hey. Oh, wow. It's an interesting flop. Check. Three clubs out there. Queen, Jack, eight of clubs. Andrew Feldman with the king of clubs. Phil Ivey with the ace of clubs. Feldman ahead right now. A little bit of a favorite for the pot as well, but... If serious money goes in here, you can be sure it's because the clubs come down, and that means Phil Ivey will be in front. Raise. I don't think Andrew's going to lay this down. He's got two overcards to the board, a straight draw, and a he thinks a flush draw. Yeah, Feldman will bet 3,000. Phil Ivey has raised it up to 9,000. Feldman can catch a 10 to make a straight, a club to hit the king high flush. And, of course, he might think he's ahead right now with ace-king. Let's see how he wants to play it. It's 6,000 back to Feldman. I can't imagine him laying it down. He might try something creative. <coughs> now, obviously, Andrew Feldman, a phenomenal player in his own right, but he's up against Phil Ivey. Probably more used to playing online. It becomes a bit of a different story when you're staring down cool. at probably the greatest player in the world, Phil Ivey. Well, he's going to call, and we're going to see a turn. And the turn oh. is the club. It's the action card. It's the four clubs on the turn. Phil Ivey with the absolute nuts. Well, Actually, I shouldn't say the absolute nuts, right? Nine, ten of clubs, actually, would be a straight flush. Thank you for catching me right there. Um, but either way, Ivey... It's going to be enough for him to put the chips in, that much is certain. But if you're Feldman, how many chips do you put in there? Remember, you can't beat 9-10, and you can't beat the ace. 20. 20,000. Well, I bet he puts in at least another 20,000. He really going on a limb on that one, huh? If you're Andrew Feldman, all you can do here is call. You're not raising. No. You know, if you raise, you're only getting called by a better hand. He also knows. He makes this bet. What's it going to be on the river? Well, well, he did make the call. He may be able to pass it on the river, but I've seen Andrew play a couple of hands where he's made some calls on the river to maybe try and call right. someone down. Well, the five of clubs on the river. Well, if somebody had six, seven of clubs now, that's a straight flush as well. Pot is nearly 64,000 chips. Ivy with the ace high flush. Feldman with the king high flush. <coughs> Feldman made a tough call on the turn. 20,000 chip bet. $20,000 bet, I should say. I'm all in. All in. Phil over betting the pot. Phil Moving all in here. Basically saying uh, he's actually putting Andrew all in. Phil, Phil Ivey is all in. Andrew Feldman with only 65,500. It's pretty much a pot size bet. Yeah, it is. Unbelievable. Turn of events here. Now, Feldman has to know that Ivy either has pretty much the nuts or nothing at all, right? Exactly. I mean, it wouldn't be value betting with a 10 or a 9 of clubs. No. It's got to be going through his mind. It's pretty well a bluff or nothing. A bluff or an ace, the ace rather. There's always the chance he's up against nine ten of clubs, but uh Well he certainly has to know that Phil Ivy is capable of a big bluff like this. The former paper boy put to the test. He's won over four million pounds online. But right now, he's faced with a big decision because Phil Ivey has moved all in. Pot is 165,000.
call. Oh, and he calls. He makes a call. I've he seen him make a few calls in the past. I wasn't surprised that he did it. He's got to realise the only hand he's beating there is a bluff. No one's going to be making a value bet with a 9 or 10. That's a big, big pot and a big, big blow for Andrew Feldman. And Andrew Feldman, it's his first time at the Million Dollar Cash Game. And it's... Uh, it's kind of an ugly welcome to the game as he's quickly down $100,000. Well, Phil Ivey has made some of the best players in the world look like mere mortals. Well, he's a very, very strong, tough player. And everyone seems to think he's always bluffing. I think the big pot he played against uh, Patrick Antonius, pretty well Patrick thought that Phil was bluffing. But Andrew Feldman just done exactly the same thought that Hill was bluffing when he wasn't. I think you find Phil bluffing an awful lot of the smaller pots, but when they start, the real big chips start going in there, he usually has the hand. Welcome back. We are in central London at the moment where the cameras and the lights are focused on some of the biggest names in the game. Let's get straight back up to your commentators. Well, things have gotten a little shaken up here. Phil Ivey, as usual, on top of the leaderboard. You know, some things never change. He is up over $130,000. Chris Ferguson behind him, he's up over $15,000. Our big loser so far, Patrick Antonius, down $26,000. But Andrew Feldman, well, not a very welcome to the party. He's down hundred grand. Well, Andrew Feldman, he's not a quitter. He's rebought for another $100,000. And a player like that, what's he thinking now? Well, he's probably regretting the call, that much is certain. Feels he's a probably a little bit unlucky, but he was up against Phil. And I just don't know whether Phil makes the bet that he made without the ace of clubs, so he might be regretting it a little. But he'll pick himself up. You don't win the kind of money he's won without being able to change your game, up it. But he is up against Phil Ivey. It's going to be a tough, tough road back for him. Well, one thing that's interesting is once Phil Ivey bets on the turn and gets called, Phil Ivey really can't make that bet on the river unless he has the ace or the straight flush. Because his opponent could have that. Remember, his opponent smooth called him. Exactly. Well, let's move on here. Button is in front of Tom Dwan. Phil Ivey, the big winner so far, is in the big blind, but that's Patrick Antonius. Pretty boy with the suited ace. Yeah. You, yourself yourself could have saved you. Nah. Pass. 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 Just the blinds. 2,100 total. Pass. Pass. And Patrick Antonio is going to take this one down. Madison does not defend with his ace. But if you really want to know what I think about it, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Say it. <laughs> Everybody at the table laughing except Andrew Feldman. Hey, what's ever on your mind? What's on my mind? It was a bad call. It was one of the worst calls I've ever seen in my life. There you go. I, I had to blow, say it. I couldn't help myself. That's why you're here. Commenting Somebody, other, other, other so players. Somebody's got to entertain this table. And since I'm here with a bunch of wet noodles. That's right. Every time you know something, you have to say it. It's in your context. But I knew one thing. When Phil moved in on the river, he had the ace of clubs in his hand minimum. Because I never would move in with less than that. I called 20,000 on the turn. I would, never, I would never do it. Ever. Well, you just think he called with on the turn. Zero? Plus. A hey, king of clubs. I know, but I, I thought you had the ace, to be honest with you. I played exactly like the king of clubs. Yeah, but if you had the ace, you'd have played it the same That's way, too. Nah, never. Really? I would have. <laughs> it's all going in the shop with the ace of clubs. Matters are very critical of Feldman's call. No, no, in the flop. Well, in fairness, Mike's pretty critical of uh, almost everyone else's play. <laughs> Rarely his own, though. Well, it was a couple of seasons ago where he was the self-proclaimed best no-limit cash game player at the table and then proceeded to lose $200,000. That is good news. And uh, Tom Duong going to take that one down. How did you learn when you know everything? I know you had the ace of clubs at hand. That I knew. I'd have quit poker forever if you didn't. You could have had the nine, ten of clubs. He's the best uh, Monday Night Record I've ever seen. He thought I had the ace of clubs last year. What's that? No, I thought you had a full house. I didn't think you had the ace of clubs. You remember the hand? Yeah, of course I remember the hand. You stole it from me. Once another year, same story. But you never know. 
I might not get any lessons today. Mike the Mouth Madison still talking. Phil Ivey still winning. And then uh, get a raise from Chris Ferguson. You made the exact same plan, Ali, tonight. First position raise with a seven eight suited. He's mixing it up. Well, the thing is, everybody else is busy talking. Maybe I can just steal a pot when nobody's looking. I can fold now. It's also a very dangerous spot when it's uh, Phil's button. Well, we don't have to worry about Phil, though. We do have to worry about Tom Dewan if you're Chris Ferguson. He's called in position with the ace queen <laughs> offsuit. A, flip with him a vulnerable like hand if you're calling you know, an under the gun raise for Chris Ferguson, isn't it? It certainly is. That's probably why he's only flat calling a lot of players he might have re raised with. Well, well Chris know. Ferguson has outflopped him. He's hit second high. pair. <laughs> he's also got backdoor hearts. Really nothing there at all for Tom Dewan. I mean, if you're Chris Ferguson. Uh, I think it's uh, you definitely have to do a little continuation bet here, right? Yeah, that's definitely what I'd have thought was on on the agenda. Yeah, Ed Ferguson, a three to one favorite over Tom Dwan. Does Tom Dwan float one here, knowing the type of player he's up against? He could do. Wants to see whether he's going to fire again on the turn. Hope he's up. Now he's probably hoping he's up against Ace King if he does decide to float one. I just think the range of hands Chris is likely to have in this spot. Normally, we're not looking at the 8-7. If we're looking at kind of genuine hands, I mean, you're thinking minimum ace-king. But if, you're, if Chris Ferguson does have ace-king and Tom Dwan calls one time, he can probably take it away from him on the turn. Exactly. He might be able to take it away from him if he's sitting there with like sevens or nines or something like that. So. Well, he's putting the pressure back on Chris. It's going to be interesting to see how much Chris likes his hand. Yeah, Tom Dwan has raised this one up, and the action's back to Ferguson. It's an odd. Now, Ferguson makes about 3,000. Tom Dwan has raised it up to about nine, I want to think. Now, if Tom Dwan actually had a legitimate hand here, might he just smooth call, though? It's an odd raise. Exactly. If he's sitting there with a 10 or an 8, he's probably likely to smooth call. It's almost like he's representing a set, because that's the kind of hand you might want to try and shovel a lot of chips in with. I mean, if, you're, if you're on Chris Ferguson's spot, are you thinking Tom Dwan here has a set, or he's on a stone called bluff, or some sort of draw, like a 6-7? Maybe, but I think if you're, if you're sitting there with 6-7 and you're Tom, that's probably the spot you do float it. You do flat call. You don't want to have to shove it all in there if you are up against an overpair. Anyway, let's see what Chris does. Chris Jesus Ferguson always so deliberate about everything he does at the poker table. And this is no exception. It looks like he's reaching for the chips, wants to make the call. No, it looks like he wants to make the re-raise. What a great play here from Chris. I think he's realized that that was a move by Tom Dwan. Good play 26. by Chris, and he picks that one up very quickly. Nice, nice read. And that's why he's the 2000 World Series of Poker champion. It's a fantastic play by Chris Ferguson. I mean, I think I think he played it pre-flop like he had aces or kings. And he said, you know what, I'm going to continue it like I have aces or kings. I also think Tom Dwan probably would have been more successful had he just called. And exactly. then tried to take it away in the turn. I think, I think you read it absolutely right when you said if he's got any kind of half a hand here, he's just going to flat call and see what happens on the turn when you're up against Chris in the first position. He, he, he spotted it for what it was. And just great play by Chris. I'm Chris Ferguson, 2000 World Champion of Poker. I've played poker all my life. Uh, you know, I, I don't remember when I learned the game. I'm sure my parents taught it to me at some point. It was 1994, so when I really decided to take the game seriously and study the game, trying to be one of the best poker players in the world. It's not something that I decided to become a professional poker player. I play poker because I love playing poker, and eventually I was making more money playing poker than anything else. And that's when I realized I was a professional poker player. Well, it's 24 hours of intense poker action 
and I thought for a second it might take a while to get things going, but I was wrong because right away Phil Ivy up one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Tom Dwan first to act. Now, one thing's interesting. I know you have a lot of experience having won $100,000 or even lost $100,000, as, as sad as it might sound. How do you feel either way? I mean, what are these players feeling just minutes into our first uh, first action? Well, I think if you're setting down for a session like this, you've got to be expecting to have some pretty big swings. I think Phil's probably going to be more full of confidence, obviously, picking up over $100,000 pretty early on. But Andrew Feldman knows he's here for the long haul. He knows it could end up that he ends up losing a few hundred thousand in this cash game. Well, this is interesting. Phil Ivey has raised it up with Jack Seven, and Andrew Feldman is going to play his button. He's going to re-raise, and he's going to take this one away as Ivey gets out of the way. So the first round goes to Ivey, but the second round goes to Feldman. I think the the, the first round was almost a knockout, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'd take that one rather than the second. Well, there's one now. Yeah, one I put over him. Broken my duck. Andrew, we've a quick chance to have a catch up. It's been pretty tough for you in the opening few hands, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, as in, I haven't really had much, many hands in the only first real pinging hand I had, the Ace King. I raised it up and flopped it straight and second up flush draw uh, against Phil Ivey. And um, he put check raised me and decided to call the turn for the inevitable flush for both of us. One. And he bet, which I pretty much felt he was going to bet the turn, whatever it was, so I felt I had to call. And the river made a flush, well, total blank. I just felt that all-in bet coming. I just felt it, wherever the river was, he was going to push. Wallen. Bill over betting the pot, moving all in here. I made the call, which, uh, obviously, he had the nuts and, yeah, it was a bit up. This is the way it goes. A call. Oh, and he calls. He makes a call. I've seen he him make a the... few calls in the past. I wasn't surprised that he did it. It's a horrible situation to be in, but obviously still early stages. Do you think you've picked up a few bits that might help you in the latter stages? And can you turn it around? Yeah, I mean, buying's nothing in this game. I can easily turn it around. You know, like Phil Ivy like, a couple of years ago was the biggest loser at the start, and mm. he ended up turning it around in one hand against Patrick. So, you know, anything can happen in, in this. You just. If I get aces against kings, then you get, can get all my money back. So, no, I'm, you know, um, I'm optimistic that hopefully hopefully get, hit some cards and connect with some flops and Phil Ivey's will be on the other end of flush over second up flush. So, so we'll we, would, we would love to see another $900,000 hand or whatever it was. Hope it goes to you. Well done. Hope it gets better for you as well. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Well done. Well, what a session of poker we've had here at the Full Tilt Poker.net Million Dollar Cash Game. Plenty more drama guaranteed next time and I hope you'll join us then. But from all of us, it's bye for now. They're great players. It's not a pushover field at all. It's like the toughest field in like history. I'm playing good enough to beat these guys. We just saw poker history made right here tonight. If you're not excited, check your pulse.